जय हिंद हेलो कैडेट्स टुडे वी आर गोइंग टू स्टडी अनादर टॉपिक फ्रॉम द फिजिक्स सब्जेक्ट ऑफ द एन डी ए सिलेबस द नेम ऑफ द टॉपिक इज रिफ्लेक्शन ऑफ लाइट ना फर्स्ट वी विल डिस्कस वेरियस एग्जाम्पल्स एंड द डिटेल्स अबाउट दोज एग्जाम्पल्स इन रिफ्लेक्शन ऑफ लाइट एंड देन वी विल सी सम इम्पॉर्टेंट लॉज ऑफ रिफ्लेक्शन एंड देन वी विल सी सम इम्पॉर्टेंट एप्लीकेशंस of reflection that we come across every day in our everyday life first what is reflection so whenever a ray of light while traveling through a particular medium strikes in on any surface it is incident on a given surface so it undergoes reflection now how it will be reflected and in what direction it might get reflected all these primarily depend on the nature of the reflecting surface so a reflecting surface is typically denoted like this these shaded lines indicate that this is the non transparent non reflective side of the reflecting surface the other one is the reflecting side so consider a ray of light incident on this say mirror so first terminology here this ray of light is called as the incident ray perpendicular drawn to the reflecting surface at the point of incidence is called as the normal now this ray of light will undergo reflection in this direction the angle between incident ray and the normal is called angle of incidence this ray here is the reflected ray angle made by reflected ray with the normal is called angle of reflection so laws of reflection state the first law says that the angle of incidence is always equal to the angle of reflection so no matter how large or small angle of incidence may be this law still holds good that angle of incidence is always equal to angle of reflection second important law is that incident ray normal and the reflected ray both lie in the same plane they both lie in the same plane what exactly is the meaning of this suppose this green board here is a reflecting surface so if a ray of light comes in this direction like this this is the normal ray comes like this and reflected ray goes like that this one single plane in which all three of these lie that is incident ray normal and reflected ray all three of them will lie on in the same plane now this is about one single ray of light getting reflected from a particular surface what if we have number of different rays of light falling on a surface and imagine it's a plain perfectly flat surface then what we will observe is called as a regular reflection and the only reason why we observe is because the surface is perfectly plain or perfectly flat so in regular reflection if parallel rays are incident on the surface then even after reflection they will continue to be parallel to each other this happens when the reflecting surface is perfectly plain perfectly flat with absolutely no irregularities on the surface instead of that if we have an irregular surface like this then if parallel rays strike the surface what we will observe is that the reflected rays will be going in very much different directions so this ray might go here this ray might go in this direction this is called as specular reflection so right now if you observe that the lights that are switched on in this room are getting reflected from this board but you don't see the reflection of those objects you don't see the image of those objects in this all you see is just a small bright area this is an example of specular reflection now instead of this 
if i hold a plane mirror somewhere here then what you will observe is you will observe an image of that particular object from where the rays are getting reflected from the mirror so everything will be seen very clearly this is an example of a regular reflection so regular and specular also called as diffused reflection whenever there is a diffused reflection you don't see a clear image all you see is some bright region on the surface of that object just like you are seeing little bit of bright region of this green board whereas the rest of the board appears to be relatively dark so this happens because of specular reflection so light getting reflected from every single object around us it could be a wall it could be the ceiling of the building it could be just any other object a person his or her clothes a vehicle rays of light getting reflected from a tree from a road surface all are examples of diffused reflection now because of the phenomena of diffused reflection we are able to actually see the world around us so when you say or when i say that i can see this board or when you say that you can see the writing on the or the drawing on the board it is mainly because the rays which got reflected from the surface they reached up to your eye they entered your eye and uh, an image of those objects was formed on the retina of your eye and as a result of that you were able to see the object also the color of the object so imagine the wall of this room is yellow in color whereas this board is green in color so why there is a difference first all the sources of light in this room are emitting white light and we know white light consists of all seven colors so from this surface from this surface only green light is getting reflected whereas every other color is getting either absorbed or transmitted and that is why this object appears to be green in color so imagine the walls of this room are yellow which means that all seven colors are incident on those walls only yellow is getting reflected remaining colors are either absorbed or transmitted and that is why the walls appear to be yellow in color so basically whatever we see around us or we are able to see everything around us is primarily because of diffused reflection now the regular reflection we are able to see only in case of a perfectly plane mirror okay now in case of a plane mirror so if we arrange it like this incident ray normal and reflected ray you will have i always equal to r now at this stage let's also understand another important principle in connection with light it is very very useful principle it's called principle of reversibility of light now this principle says that in any given example any given situation of reflection or refraction if we reverse the direction of travel of any ray of light it will retrace the same path in exactly opposite direction which means let's take the example of this diagram this is the incident ray this is the normal this is the reflected ray suppose instead of this there is an incident ray coming in this direction at the same angle then it will get reflected along the same path and at the same angle the only difference is let us draw it on the same diagram so if a ray of light goes like this it will get reflected like this now this will become your incident ray this will become angle of incidence this will become angle of reflection and this will become the reflected ray so no value has changed no angle has changed no path of ray of light has changed only the direction was reversed and that is why the meaning has changed so previously whichever was the incident ray now became the reflected ray and whichever was the deflected ray became the incident ray now this can be understood using a very very simple illustration imagine there is a mirror 
fixed to this board there is another person standing on that side i am standing here and i am looking into that mirror and what i see is i see the face of that person on that side now if i am able to see the face of that person in the mirror that person will also be able to see my face in the mirror this we can establish on the basis of reversibility of light principle so please remember and understand reversibility of light principle because even in the further part of optics that principle is extremely extremely useful again let me repeat that principle in any case of reflection or a refraction if the direction of travel of a ray of light is reversed it will retrace the same path in exactly opposite direction okay that is all for now